Hello to everyone watching this. I am Binod John and welcome to my YouTube channel Bio with Binod. I have been working under the Ministry of Education in the Republic of Maldives teaching Cambridge O level biology and Cambridge A level biology and edX cell biology. In the year 2018 I worked in Veramal International School in Madurai teaching class 10 11 and 12 biology students. I even got the chance to work as a lecturer for neat biology. At present we know that it is very difficult to have classroom educations so I thought I will make a platform so that many biology students can benefit from that. So I thought of making a YouTube channel so that many students can make use of it and so please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for further updates. Cambridge IGCSE Biology 0610 syllabus gives students two options. One is they can go for course syllabus or they can go for extended syllabus. The assessment part consists of three papers. For course students they have to write paper 1, paper 3 and paper 6. The extended students they have to write paper 2, paper 4 and paper 6. Paper 6 is the alternative to practical or practical part. Paper 1 and 2 it is multiple choice questions and paper 3 and 4 it is short answer and structured answer paper. So that is all about the assessment part for this Cambridge IGCSE 0610 syllabus. Now let's get into the biology syllabus content. For this biology course for both core and extended there are 10 major topics. The topics are cells and cell processes, animal nutrition, plant nutrition and transport, respiration and the human transport system, coordination, response and homeostasis, reproduction in plants, human reproduction, inheritance and evolution, organisms and environment, human influences on the environment. Out of these 10 topics, students they can cover up to 7th topic in grade 9 itself so that when they come to grade 10 they have to learn only 3 topics then for references children you please note that you have to refer or you have to follow Cambridge Entos textbooks okay then out of these 10 topics okay the most important 2 topics are the first cells and cell processes and respiration and transport in human beings okay so today I would like to start with the transport in human beings okay or the circulatory system I am planning to start from transport in humans as it is one of the important topic for the examination okay transport in humans right transport in humans so, um, transport in humans, right? So, in human beings, you know, food and oxygen, they are transported, okay? And this system we call by a name and it is called as the circulatory system. Circulatory system. So, circulatory system means it is the transport system of the body. So, the main function of this system is, uh, this system transport food and oxygen, food that is glucose and oxygen, okay, food and oxygen, right, and it just carry back the waste, okay, to the site of, uh, you know, excretion, right, so food and oxygen, it transports the circulatory system transport food and oxygen to all the cells in the body right for metabolic reactions and the waste materials are uh, transported back to the site of excretion so now this circulatory system it consists of mainly three things circulatory system consists of three things okay they are right it consists of the blood vessels blood vessels okay a pump 
okay and the medium of transport that is the blood okay so the circulatory system consists of blood vessels a pump and you know the pump that is the heart and blood right so we will go into detail of these three okay uh, in the coming um, session so transport in humans circulatory system so the function of circulatory system i told you that is to transport food and oxygen and to uh, you know carry this waste back okay then the next that is uh, the circulatory system already i told you consists of blood vessels pump blood okay right now this circulatory system consists of many blood vessels okay usually the blood okay blood it starts from the arteries from the arteries okay right okay and then it becomes smaller arteries called arterioles okay and when the blood enters the organs it branches into sm the smaller blood vessels called the capillaries and this capillaries you know uh, they join to form smaller blood vessels called venules okay and these venules they uh, join together and they form bigger vessels called veins so this is how the circulatory system function okay so you can see like in the picture so blood flows from the arteries uh, to the organs okay arteries then it becomes arterioles then it become capillaries okay from capillaries again they join together to form venules and venules they join to form veins so yes arteries arterioles capillaries venules veins so you can see we will learn in detail about this uh, in the coming session okay right so um, about blood vessels when we learn we have to learn about these three type of blood vessels okay so just to show the circulatory system i just drew this picture okay i hope that you can understand this okay arteries capillaries veins so the blood is pumped from the pumping organ with the help of arteries okay right then when it enters the organs okay the arteries branches into arterioles and it enters into the organ okay so in the organs many many smaller blood vessels are there they are the capillaries so from capillaries food and oxygen they will be moving into the <coughs> different organs and uh, the waste materials the waste from the cells okay carbon dioxide like that so it will be carried into the venules and then it will be moving towards the veins and veins reaches again the pumping organ okay so this is what is called as circulation right so please listen you don't forget the function of the circulatory system that is the uh, you know that is mainly the circulatory system function to transport food and oxygen and to carry the waste away okay so i hope you understood this okay right then next we are going to see the different types of circulation the different types of circulation Already we have seen that the circulatory system consists of three parts one is the blood vessel the other one is the pump and the last one is the blood okay so already i explained that how the blood is uh, moving through the blood vessels the blood vessels there are of three types we have seen that arteries capillaries veins so through arteries blood will be pumped and uh, uh, then it enters into smaller blood vessels arterioles 
then you know in the organs this arterioles branches into many capillaries and from the capillaries the blood is moving uh, towards the pumping organ through venules and veins so in order to ensure one way flow of blood there are valves present in the veins okay so that point please keep it in mind okay we will again uh, you know learn about this so there are valves okay so valve will make sure valves there are valves if in the heart also valves are there uh, in the veins also valves are there okay so this valves make sure that the blood flows in one direction there are pathway per questions connected with this okay so please keep it in mind so in the circulatory system there are valves which make one way flow of blood which make sure one way flow of blood okay now we will move on to the circulatory system in human beings and we have to compare this way the circulatory system in fish okay so in human beings the circulatory system is double circulatory system double circulatory system okay so i will write one more word here it is closed double circulatory system okay so closed double circulatory system in human beings okay right now what do you mean by this closed what do you mean by double okay these two things everyone should know very well okay closed circulatory system means the blood is flowing through arteries veins capillaries and you know it is closed okay it is moving through blood vessels okay and uh, you know from the capillaries only the exchange take place the exchange of uh, you know food oxygen and waste take place from the capillaries so it is closed then what is open open means you know the body organs are bathed in blood okay in insects you know we can see like that insects you know they have tubular heart okay so this tubular heart when it contracts the blood flows down into the cavities that is those cavities we call it as the sinus okay so blood you know will be moving into that when the tubular heart contracts okay then when the tubular heart when it relaxes the blood slowly it enter back to the heart okay so there are walls in the tubular heart okay so like that so uh, uh, you know open circulatory system is also there okay that is the difference between closed and open closed means okay arteries capillaries veins like that the blood is flowing open means okay the organs are bathed in the blood okay an example is in insects we can see like that okay open circulatory system so that is the difference between closed and open circulatory system then next point is double circulatory system what do you mean by double circulatory system you know double circulatory system means i will draw and show you the blood flows twice through the heart okay then when i say the blood flows twice through the heart okay you may think how it is so i am going to just show that okay just uh, look here okay. if this is the heart this square box okay and a small square box i will draw top of that and small one below that below the main square okay so this the the middle square i am going to divide it into four okay right <coughs> yes so consider this as our heart heart okay so now you can see on the white board that is heart consists of four chambers okay four chambers so the upper chambers they are called as atrium or auricles the upper chambers atrium or auricles 
the lower chambers, they are called as ventricles. Okay, right? So, I told, let the middle square be the heart and I divided it into four chambers. Okay, so the upper chambers, they are the atrium and the lower chambers, they are the ventricles. Then the next thing is, we want to know, okay, which is the right and which is the left. Okay, this is very, very important. So the same way only, when you draw, okay, you draw on a paper. I mean, same way means, okay, the labelings. Okay, so this is my right hand. So the right side, okay, things, you have to add right so that this atrium, okay, upper chambers of atrium now. So you can write right atrium. So lower chambers are ventricles. So you can write right ventricles. Okay. So atrium ventricles. So now you know right. So on the paper also, when you are asked to label in the examination, same way. You should not get any confusion there. So the right side, if you have doubt, you know, take the paper and just to see which is right. Okay, and which is left. So that exactly you label right, right. You will not get the confusion which is right and which is left. Many students, they get this confusion. That is why I'm telling like this. Okay, so right, right atrium, right ventricles. So that the left side, you can see left atrium and left ventricle. Okay, so now all the four chambers of the heart are labeled. So this labeling, you should never forget. Okay, the right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So, these are the four chambers, right? Okay, then, now, what is this double circulatory system? From the right ventricle, okay, I will use red marker. From the right ventricle, okay, blood is pumped to the legs. Okay, you can see the arrow, right? And here, this small square, this is the lens. Okay. So the blood is going to the lens. Why the blood is going to the lens, you know? Ah, to take oxygen from the lens. Okay. Right. That exchange of gases, it takes place in the respiratory system. I mean, in the lens. Okay. Right. So then the... The blood with oxygen, the oxygenated blood, it comes back to the left atrium. Okay? So, the blood is coming back to the left atrium. Right? Then, from there, it moves to uh, the left ventricle. Left ventricle will pump the blood to the full body. Okay? And uh, that is through arteries, arterioles, blood capillaries. And from the blood capillaries, uh, you know, exchange of gases take place. Okay. And like that, you know, the, um, like that, the blood, you know, uh, it comes back from the organs. Uh, it contains carbon dioxide and that deoxygenated blood, it will come back to the right atrium of the heart. So you can see that. Okay, so here you can see it is something like, you know, the number 8. Something like that. Number 8. And here you can see the blood, you know, it comes to the heart twice. Okay, so again, this is, you know, this represents our body. The small square down represents the body. So body to heart. Then from the heart. Okay, right atrium to right ventricle. From right ventricle, blood is pumped to lens for oxygenation. After that, it's coming back to the heart. Okay, then again it goes uh, down and pumped to the full body. So here you can see, in short, you know, uh, I can say like this, okay, what is double circulation means? It is nothing. It is heart, lens, heart. Heart, body, heart. So you just keep this in mind, okay? What is double circulation? Double circulation is nothing. It is just, you know, blood is pumped from heart to the lens and from the lens back to the heart and from the heart to the entire body 
um, and from the body back to the heart or in short you can remember double circulation means heart lengths heart heart body heart okay I hope you understood heart lengths heart heart body heart okay so that's all about double circulation so I just write that here okay heart lengths heart heart body heart now okay one more thing just you please remember heart lengths heart this is a smaller circulation okay because you know human heart human heart is ventrally placed and it is placed between the lengths okay and it is you know uh, pointed towards the uh, left side of the body okay and uh, uh, this time I just want to tell that there are one in 12,000 10,000 to 12,000 people the heart is directed towards right okay it is actually a genetic problem okay it is called dextrocardia you don't have to learn about that just I told okay but normally the heart you know it is pointed towards the left left side okay in the ventral area the uh, ventral area that is in the thoracic cavity right so heart lens heart right and heart body heart it's a bigger circulation blood is pumped to the full cells in the body and you know it's coming back to the heart it's a bigger circulation so this bigger circulation we call it as the systemic circulation so in many many past paper question questions you can see this question what is mean by double circulatory system double circulatory system means blood flows twice through the heart once again okay once okay then again it goes to the lens and coming back so twice the blood passes through the heart that is double circulatory system okay or in short you know double circulatory system is equal to pulmonary circulation plus systemic circulation you can write okay double circulation is equal to pulmonary circulation plus systemic circulation okay but in full you have to write okay then only the examiners they can understand that you meant for pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation so already now we know what is mean by open circulatory system closed circulatory system double circulatory system now we are going to see what is the difference between double circulatory system and single circulatory system okay right so open circulatory system I told you organs are bathed in blood okay so those organisms they have a tubular heart with walls so when they contract blood is pumped into the organs and the organs are bathed in blood okay and when the tubular heart relaxes the blood enters the heart so like that the circulation is going on in closed circulatory system I told you it consists of blood vessels heart okay and blood okay and uh, this closed circulatory system um, you know the blood is flowing through the blood vessels okay blood vessels and it is pumped from heart okay double circulatory system I told you double circulatory system consists of okay two parts one is the pulmonary circulation where the blood is pumped from the heart to the lungs for oxygenation and then the blood is pumped from the heart to the full body so we can say like this it is a heart lungs heart and heart body heart so that is double circulatory system now what is single circulation just look at the board okay for single circulation okay that is what is this single circulation let us see right so you know fish right so this is a fish okay right and I will just draw the blood circulation in fish okay see that 
Okay. Right. How the blood vessels are going on. And this is the heart. And you can see capillaries and the main blood vessels. Okay. Right? Yes. So here you can see the circulation of blood in fish. Okay. So here you can see the heart of fish. Heart. The heart consists of two chambers. Okay. But in double circulation, the heart consists of four chambers. Right? So this you keep it in mind. Okay. In single circulation, the heart consists of two chambers. So there will be a chamber in the heart where it receives blood. Okay, the first chamber. Right? That is the atrium. Then another part is there, blood from atrium, uh, it will pass to ventricles and from the ventricle the blood is pumped, you can see, the blood is pumped and it is pumped to where, you know, to the gills, you can see here four, okay, uh, gill arches where, you know, you can see this gills, okay, so this gills you can see inside the operculum of fish on either side of the head. Okay, so this blood from the ventricles will be pumped to the gills and when blood passes through the gills, that time uh, this gas exchange takes place from the water, oxygen enters into the gills and from the gills carbon dioxide passes out into the water. Okay, so this, uh, after this gas exchange, the oxygen, you know, it will be, uh, you know, moving. Uh, to this blood vessels and it will be supplied to all the cells via capillaries okay so here also it is a closed circulatory system because blood is moving through the blood vessels okay and when the blood become uh, deoxygenated again the deoxygenated will be blood will be collected back to the heart and it will be pumped from the heart to the gills gills for you know oxygenation again the blood is circulated so here you can see the blood is circulated heart gills body okay i'm going to draw that here okay so heart heart gills body then see this is what we call it as single circulation so now you can see Single circulation, you see, single circulation, right? So I hope you understood single circulation. Okay, so you can see the picture. You can see heart, gills, body. Okay, heart, gills, body. So in single circulation, blood flows only once through the heart, but in double circulation, already I explained blood flows twice through the heart then what is the advantages advantage of double circulation okay compared to single circulation in double circulation as the blood comes back to the heart after oxygenation this blood is getting an extra push so that very fast blood can be pumped uh, and it can be supplied to the cells for metabolic reactions and all okay so and uh, another thing in birds and mammals the they have a constant internal environment so they need heat okay so uh, since the oxygen is supplied fast metabolic reactions can take place faster and they can uh, maintain this body temperature and all exactly okay so please keep it in mind uh, the difference between double circulation and single circulation in single circulation blood flows only once through the heart in double circulation that is heart lens heart and heart body heart in double circulation blood flows twice through the heart okay and what is double circulation very simply you can say double circulation is equal to systemic circulation plus pulmonary circulation Pulmonary circulation is the shorter circulation because, you know, blood is pumped to the lens. 
okay that is heart lens heart that is the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation which is the greater circulation it is heart body heart okay so i hope that everyone understood very well the circulatory system then the second thing is the single circulation of blood in fish then double circulation then last advantages of double circulations so these are the important things you have to remember for your examination okay now i am going into the next that is a uh, human heart okay now we are going to learn in detail the human heart first of all the external features of human heart the external features you know our heart is around 300 grams or uh, you know it is the size of our fist okay it is around 300 grams like okay now then the heart where it is you know okay it is in the thoracic cavity okay and it is inside the rib cage right and it is pointed towards the left side of the chest okay in normal case it is pointed towards the left side of the chest but i told you before itself uh, one in 12,000 people, you know, uh, you can see heart which is pointed towards the right side of the chest. Okay, and this condition, you know, it is actually um, a genetic disorder, right? So you don't have to learn much about that, just I told, right? Okay, then the heart, okay, heart is covered by a membrane. This membrane is called pericardial membrane okay right so this pericardial membrane and inside the membrane there is a fluid called uh, you know pericardial fluid and the function of this fluid is to absorb shock okay then the heart it is made up of okay three layers okay the outer part it is called as the epicardium then middle myocardium and inside endocardium so three layers makes the heart okay and the heart is made up of a special type of muscle and it is called as the cardiac muscles or cardiac myocytes okay and these muscles have a particular property that they are myogenic means they beat within they beat by themselves okay so um, just to keep it in mind this is all about uh, you know an introduction of the human heart then already I told human heart consists of four chambers the upper atriums and the lower ventricles and uh, you know now let us just go through the heart structure okay so you can just see how I am drawing it because it is better if you learn in the examination also if a question asks you can draw it fast okay how to draw the heart <laughs> So you can see the first step in drawing. So if you can learn how to draw the human heart, it is well and good. Okay, right. So next what you have to draw is you have to go for the pulmonary artery. Okay, so you can start from here like this. And the second line you can connect with the septum. Okay, then uh, here. You can just so this will be going like this okay the pulmonary artery at least it is dividing into two branches okay going to the two lengths right then you can go for the iota iota when you draw aortic arch you have to draw okay just Right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> now almost it is finished. Okay. Right. Then you can draw the vena cava's. 
just okay from down part the vena cava you can draw right yes now the pulmonary veins All heart. Okay. Yes, and two holes you can put here. Two pulmonary veins comes from the left lens and two from right. Okay. Yes, and again this aorta. I did not finish the aorta. Fibers. The part which are fibers. Okay. Then the tendons. Okay. Now. Some pictures you can see two vessels here. Okay, so don't confuse. This vessels opens to this chamber, right? This one going to the back and entering like this. Okay, so now you can see the heart. Okay, I hope you learn how to draw this. Okay, if you learn, it is almost, it is always good, so that easily you can draw and explain. The heart. Okay, so here on the board, now you can see the human heart. Okay, now already we learned the chambers, so I am going to label the chambers. Okay, this is right. Okay, the upper chambers are atrium, so this is right atrium. Okay, ah, this is left side, so this is left atrium. Right, and down the lower chambers are ventricles, so this is right ventricle and this is left ventricle okay so these are the four chambers right so first you should know the chambers of the heart okay so remember you won't get any doubt so if you get confusion of this left and right just the right side it is right left side it is left so you remember the upper chambers are atrium okay the receiving chambers and the pumping chambers, they are the ventricles. Okay, so please keep this in mind. Then, now, you know, between this atrium and ventricle, you can see here something. This is called as the AV wall. Okay, AV wall. This AV wall, this is this can be called as AV wall or tricuspid wall. Tricuspid wall. Okay. Why it is called tricuspid wall? Because the wall consists of three cusps. Like this. This is the cusp. Okay. If three cusp means it is tricuspid wall. So the wall between atrium and ventricle, it is tricuspid wall. Here also one confusion may come. So children, you know, usually when in the examination, when they ask to label this wall and this wall, they get confusion. So you can write AV wall, atrioventricular wall. Some students, you know, they know that uh, tricuspid name also. So for them, it is fine. They can write tricuspid wall. And this wall, it is called as the AV wall or bicuspid wall. Bicuspid bicuspid wall or AV okay bicuspid wall 
So, tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve. And you know, bicuspid means only two cuspas, cuspa present. Okay, right? So, tricuspid, bicuspid. It's the wall between the atrium and ventricles. Or AV walls. Okay? Don't get confusion. Right? So, now I hope that you know to label very well right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle and the walls. Okay? Then, again, two more walls are there. I did not draw here. So, that is, there are walls, you know, within the heart, you know, where the blood vessel starts. Okay? And these walls, they are called by name, they are called as semi-lunar walls. Okay? Semi-lunar walls. Semi-lunar walls. Right? And whenever you draw the walls, remember that this AV walls, you have to draw down. If you draw some students now, when they are asked to draw, they draw up. Then it is wrong. Okay? You have to draw down with the double lines. Okay? Here also, walls draw with the double lines down. Why down? You know, that is the direction of blood flow. Blood will not flow back. No backward flow of blood. Why? Because walls are present. Okay? So, to show the blood flow, you have to you know, draw the walls like this. Okay? If you draw up, it is wrong. You won't get any marks. Even semi-lunar walls, the direction is up, you see. Right? So, because blood is flowing like that. So, in the direction, we have to draw. Okay? So, semi-lunar walls. Right? And now, the blood vessels we will see. The last part. The blood vessels. Okay? The blood vessels, see, this is the blood vessel which is going to both the legs. Okay? This blood vessel. Right? So, this is called pulmonary artery. Right? So, I will write here pulmonary artery. Pulmonary artery. Okay? Then, these two blood vessels opening into left atrium and these two also going, okay, through the back part of the heart and entering here. So, four pulmonary veins entering into left atrium, two from left lens and two from right lens, okay, so this is pulmonary vein. If sometimes, they have never asked a question like that, if they ask to label these two, these two are pulmonary veins, okay, don't get confusion, pulmonary veins actually, this is opening into the left atrium, right, then, then, next to blood vessel, Okay, the biggest blood vessel, okay, you can see a blood vessel and an arch like this blood vessel, it is called iota. Iota. And here this arch like this is aortic arch. From here, blood, uh, you know, is going to uh, uh, this right hand, left hand, and to the brain also. Okay, carotid artery, okay, and the arteries to the uh, hands. Okay, all supply is going from this iota. Okay, so just keep it in mind. Then the main iota is coming. Okay, it is going dorsally and this will go, okay, and supply blood to all the organs. Okay, and the blood is going, you know, with a pressure because you can see here the difference between the muscles of the uh, heart chambers. You can see when you draw also, you know, it is very important that See, this left ventricle, you know, walls are thicker than other walls. Okay, you see, it's very thick, left ventricle walls. But next second, thicker is right ventricle. And atriums, you know, the walls are almost same. Okay, and walls are not thicker as ventricles. Why, you know, because atrium, it is the receiving part of the blood. Okay, and ventricles, you know, pumping. That is why ventricles, you know, the blood vessels are thicker. And this left ventricle, you know, walls are very thicker because from here, the blood is pumped to the full body cells from here. Okay, right? So, this is what we learn, double circulation. The blood, like this, it is going to the lens after oxygenation. The, from the lens, blood is coming back to the left atrium. Then it enters the left ventricle. From here, 
because of the contraction of this muscles here from the left ventricle blood is pumped okay with great force so that the blood can be easily supplied to the cells okay right then next blood vessel is see these two blood vessels they are vena cava this is coming from the down part of the body so we call it as the inferior vena cava inferior vena cava and this is coming from the upper side of the body we call it as a superior vena cava superior vena cava okay the vena cavas right now you can see there is a wall separating the right and the left part of the heart okay so this right side it receives the deoxygenated blood okay and from the right ventricle blood is going to the lungs and it is coming back to the left atrium so the left side you know the blood is oxygenated blood so this wall this wall is called as the septum this wall separates the right and left side of the heart okay septum then you can see um there are some thread like things you can see thread like okay connected to the this av walls okay and these threads they are called as tendons okay tendons tendons so you can see tendons here also okay and here also the tendons right so these tendons are connected to uh, the walls and down at the base they are connected to some uh, fibers they are called parkinchi fibers and uh, you can see these fibers here right yes so the walls so we will learn you know what is the function of this tendons okay right when we learn the function of the heart that time we will learn the function of this tendons okay right so then um, you can see the blood vessels right all the blood vessels don't confuse the blood vessels so from right ventricle you can see one blood is going towards uh, the lens that is pulmonary artery it branches into two to the two lens okay and you can see the aorta okay it is supplying oxygenated blood to all parts of the body right then these two are the veins okay carrying blood from the upper and the lower part of the body and uh, this four pulmonary veins opens into the left atrium from the lungs okay this is all about the structure of the heart then one more thing you know the heart muscles i told they are myogenic they always you know they they contract okay so for this heart muscles oxygenated blood is supplied by uh, you know blood vessels called coronary arteries okay so you can just see this this picture to the heart muscles the blood is supplied by the coronary arteries one is here one is on the other side okay so uh, i hope you got it this is the coronary artery okay i will label it coronary artery artery okay coronary artery right so uh, hope you understood coronary artery coronary artery supply oxygenated blood to the heart muscles okay right so that's all about the blood vessels right and um, the different walls okay then the septum right then um, the the fiber parkinchi fibers okay tendons and uh, the different blood vessels okay so that's all about the structure of the mammalian heart so i hope that you all understood you know the different parts of the mammalian heart okay so please keep all these terms in your mind okay so there are many questions they give the pictures and they give and they ask to label and to write the function so you should know 
the name of the parts as well as the function of it right so i hope you all understood it very well so the four chambers don't get confusion right so you know it i feel right then the septum then the blood vessels okay and one more thing just i want to add you know this arteries okay arteries pulmonary artery you know aorta is also artery you remember that arteries always carry blood away from the heart very easy to remember arteries okay arteries away from the heart see pulmonary artery is carrying blood away from the heart veins okay right pulmonary vein you see carrying blood towards the heart semilunar valves towards the heart okay pulmonary veins from the lungs towards the heart veins towards that is another thing to keep it in mind okay right arteries carry blood away from the heart pulmonary artery going to the lungs aorta going to the different parts of the body okay pulmonary vein coming towards the heart okay the vena cava is coming towards the heart okay so this is very important arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood towards the heart so that's all about the structure of the mammalian heart i hope you understood so human beings we have a double circulatory system okay the blood flows twice through the heart it comes to this part first then it is going to the lens again coming back to this part of the heart second then with the extra force it is going to all the cells supplying oxygen okay that is all about the structure of mammalian heart thanks for watching my session i hope all of you enjoyed i will be covering the remaining syllabus in the coming videos so please subscribe to my channel so thank you everyone